Good morning everyone and a warm welcome to our service for Sunday the 11th of October. I hope you're all well and are being encouraged these days. Uh, Just two brief announcements. Firstly, to remind you that Sunday the 18th, next Sunday, is going to be our BMS Harvest Appeal and we take up an offering and give it to BMS. We normally show a video in the church service and then give out the the offering basket. So what we'll do for those of you who can't be with us, we'll uh, record what it's about and if you wish to get an offering envelope please do get in touch with the church and we'll get that out to you. Secondly just again we are open the Scottish government has very graciously looked into churches and decided that as long as they obey the guidelines we can continue to meet so our services are 10 and 12 each Sunday please call in to book and we're open for the drop-in on Friday from 11 to 3. Let's pray and then we'll start. Gracious Lord, we thank you for this new day. As the sun rises, we're reminded of the constancy of your faithfulness, the bright hope of your love, and the risen power of our Lord Jesus Christ. As we listen to worship, may our hearts indeed sing praises to you. And as your word is open, may you speak to us by your powerful Holy Spirit. For we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our first reading is a wee bit long, but it's a great psalm. So if you've got your Bible with you, read along with me to Psalm 33. This comes from the English Standard Version. Shout for joy in the Lord, O you righteous. Praise befits the upright. Give thanks to the Lord with the lair. Make melody to him with the harp of ten strings. Sing to him a new song. Play skillfully in the strings with loud shouts. For the word of the Lord is upright, and all his work is done in faithfulness. He loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of the steadfast love of the Lord. By the word of the Lord the heavens were made. By his breath all the host. 
He gathers the waters of the sea as a heap. He puts the deep in storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spoke and it came to be. He commanded and it stood firm. The Lord brings the counsel of the nations to nothing. He frustrates the plans of the peoples. The counsel of the Lord stands forever. The plans of his heart to all generations. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord and the people whom he has chosen and his heritage. The Lord looks down from heaven. He sees all the children of men. From where he sits in throne, he looks out on all the inhabitants of the earth. He who fashions the hearts of them all and observes all their deeds. The king is not saved by his great army. A warrior is not delivered by his great strength. The war horse is a false hope for salvation. And by its rescue, might cannot come. Behold, the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him, on those who hope in his steadfast love that he may deliver their soul from death and keep them alive in famine. Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. Our heart is glad in him because we trust in his holy name. Let your steadfast love, O Lord, be upon us, even as we hope in you. Amen. Our second reading comes from Galatians and over the next couple of weeks we're going to look at the powerful wee book of Galatians together. It really is spiritual dynamite and I pray the Lord will bless us and encourage us through it. Today's reading is from Galatians 1 verses 1 to 10. Paul, an apostle not from men nor through man, but through Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead. 
and all the brothers who are with me to the churches of Galatia. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins, to deliver us from the present evil age according to the will of our God and Father, to whom be glory for ever and ever. Amen. I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting him who called you in the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel. Not that there is another one, but there are some who trouble you and want to distort the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven should preach to you a gospel contrary to the one we preached to you, let him be accursed. As we have said before, so now I say again, if anyone is preaching to you a gospel contrary to the one you received, let him be accursed. For am I now seeking the approval of man or of God? Or am I trying to please man? If I were still trying to please man, I would not be a servant of Jesus Christ. Amen.
Breaking news, urgent news, Twitter update, news flash. Pig notifications in your phone, even as I'm recording this on my phone, notifications are pinging in about Trump and Israel and the RTE news in Ireland. It seems that we know everything all the time anywhere nowadays, don't we? We suffer so much from information overload and news overload and all sorts of overload. And we get tired of it. I'm sure you've maybe felt like a lot of folk I've talked to this week that they just they can't be bothered with the news anymore. It's just all doom and gloom. And would it be good to have some good news? Some news that almost seems too good to be true, but is. Well, as we start Galatians this week and a new series we'll look at over the next couple of weeks, there's a man who comes who's the key, one of the key characters in the book. The Apostle Paul, look at verse 1 there. Paul, an apostle, not from man, nor through man. This isn't man-made news, man-made revelation. This news is from Jesus Christ and God the Father, who raised him from the dead. This isn't normal Trevor MacDonald news. This is news given to a man like us about the God of the universe, our Heavenly Father, who made us and shaped us and his son, who died on a cross and was raised from the dead. Unless you think Paul's off in his own wee world, he's got brothers and sisters around him, all the brothers and sisters who are with me, to the church of Galatia. We reckon the Galatians were Celtic tribes that settled in the region of Turkey, um, around three key cities. And the Galatians were probably Celt from Ealer Gaul, which is now modern day France, or even our own shores, Celtic Britain. So in a cheeky way, we can say actually Galatians is written to us. Being the living and active word of God, of course it's written for us, but you know what I mean. And so he writes to this church, a church that he's planted, a church that we reckon on his first missionary journey he had planted in these three cities of Lystra, Iconium and Antioch. And Paul brings them great news. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ who gave himself for our sins to deliver us from the present evil age according to the will of God. Our Father, to him be glory forever and ever. Amen. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I am found. Was blind, but now I see. Twas grace that taught my heart to fear and grace my fears relieved. God's good news is the gospel. The gospel is the herald. It is the breaking news. It's the triumphal announcement. Evangelion means joyous, glad tidings, good news. The emperor in Rome didn't have Twitter or Facebook or BBC News 24. He sent heralds into the cities to proclaim imperial announcements, be it war, be it peace, be it the new emperor. These heralds would be great with excitement, news. I'm sure all of us remember, or old enough to remember back 20 years ago when breaking news actually happened, when they interrupted your programme. This is the BBC News, we have a breaking announcement, you know, the Prime Minister's resigned or we're the first Gulf War. These heralds come to bring good news, Evangelion. And Paul's an apostle, a messenger bringing news from the centre of the universe, from the one who has the power to make all things possible and new from God himself. This is his message, that we're sinners. You, me, everyone, all mankind has sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We recognize in our hearts that something's not right, that something's wrong with how we treat each other, how we view ourselves. And we recognize that when we think of God, sometimes it isn't as father and joy, as a sense of dread, a sense of we have offended. And we're right, we have. We rebelled against God, we turned our back, and we deserve his justice, his judgment. But that's not the message God brings. He talks about his son who came in us. Jesus didn't have to convince God to come and save us. It was God the Father's heart. The son applied it. The son did it because both of them loved us, and he went in the power of the third member of the Godhead, the Holy Spirit, who loves us. Not an amazing thought who gave himself for our sins to deliver us from the present evil age continuous. Jesus died on the cross, bearing our sin, absorbing the wrath of God, that we would be forgiven, and he died our death, that we would live. 
as we've already heard in verse 1, he raised from, God raised him from the dead, Jesus alive forevermore. You're more loved than you can possibly ever imagine. You can have peace that is greater than anything this world has to offer. You're also worse than you can possibly imagine. But God sees that. He sees you truly as you are, without props, without illusion, without hypocrisy. He sees your heart and he looks upon it. He says, as Jesus needed to die to forgive you and to make you right, but die he has and risen he has because he loves you and his power is available to you and you will see and know the glory of God forever and ever. Amen. That is the gospel. That is the good news. Paul repeats this throughout his letter, 1 Corinthians 15. This is the gospel. To wit, the Christ came, he died for our sins, and the third day he rose again. The ancient creeds of the church have that, the Nicene Creed, the Apostolic Creed. The good news of the gospel and has the power of God on salvation. It's transformed life. It's transformed my life. And friend, if you're listening today and you are a Christian who loves Jesus, you know the power that's transformed your life and the hope it can bring. And friend, if you're listening to this, somehow you've stumbled onto our meditation. This power can be yours. What I'm saying isn't my words or the Apostle Paul words, but it's God. We're charged to be messengers from him to you. And I pray your spirit will help you to know this joyous good news. So we have the message from heaven. But there's a caution. In Galatians, as we go into it, we'll see these themes emerge. Paul defines the gospel, the beauty of Jesus, but he also talks about those who cause problems. Verse 6, the danger of ignoring the gospel. I'm astonished that you're so quickly deserting him who called you into the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel. Not that there is another one, but some would trouble you and distort the gospel of Christ. Christ has enemies. People like things the way they are. They don't want the revolutionary, world-changing power of the gospel in their lives. The gospel makes us confront sin. It makes us repent. It makes us be good husbands, fathers, wives and mothers. It brings order to society. The chaotic forces and ultimately the enemy of our souls doesn't want. And so there are those who will try and twist and tweak its message. Sometimes even with good intentions because the power of the gospel is so revolutionary and vast that they're scared of it. Paul cautions, if anyone should preach your gospel, even an angel, contrary to the one that the apostles preached and that Jesus himself preached, the apostles continue in the work of Jesus and Jesus is God's representative. He is true God of true God and God has put him in the position that all things are centered around him and Jesus speaks, he is the way, the truth and the life. If anyone comes and takes you off that or tries to nudge into you a gospel that's your own works, not your own abilities, your own doings to get saved, that's wrong. We're saved by faith in the living God and in the Son who gave himself for us. Paul later on in Galatians 2 to say, the life I live, I live by faith. We're justified by faith, we're made right by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. We have to trust Christ that his death on the cross on our behalf is sufficient for our salvation. His resurrection from the dead and his outpouring of the Spirit into us is sufficient for keeping us on the Christian life. And it is. Paul's so strong about this. He says, if anyone preaches another gospel, let him be anathema, let him be accursed. Strong words. But if we follow a false gospel, we'll be lost for all eternity. And for somebody to do that to us is the worst thing you can do. That's why it's so important that we preach God's word, that we live out and follow God's word exactly. Because we're not trying to please people, verse 10. We're not seeking the approval of man, but we want to follow God. We want to be Christ. Because to be his is to be loved, to be forgiven, to be accepted in the beloved, to have strength and power and joy in the Holy Spirit. We are more loved than we can ever know. The gospel is better news than we ever dared hope. And it's ours through simple faith and repentance in Jesus Christ, our Lord, who loved us and gave himself for us. This is amazing good news. And I pray this morning, Christian, that you'll refresh yourself in this gospel, and that you'll commit to preaching, sharing, and believing it with all the strength that God gives us. And non-Christian, if you're listening to this message, 
God loves you. He has provided the way for you to have peace with him, to have your sins forgiven. There is no other way for you to be saved, no other way for you to know the God of heaven and earth than through Jesus Christ, his Son. Will you trust him? Let us pray. O great God, sovereign, King of kings and Lord of lords, gentle shepherd, faithful friend, come to us this morning by your spirit afresh, I pray, not because we are anything, but because we need you. We need your forgiveness. We need your renewal. We need your hope. We need your putting us back together. So come and bless those who follow Jesus and love him. May they not fall into the trap of the Galatians trusting in other gospels, but trusting only in Jesus Christ. And may those who do not know you know the power of your resurrection this morning for salvation. In Jesus' name, amen.